Good morning and welcome to the Dance to Learn podcast with your host, Jessica Strong. The Dance to Learn podcast is the place for dance educators and studio owners to get the best dance teacher resources, tips, and advice to help you dance, learn, and grow right along with your students. Let's get into today's episode. Hello, dance teachers, and happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Dance to Learn podcast with Jessica Strong, and I'm the creative director and owner here at Dance to Learn. And today I'm really excited to have my guest with me. It's Jennifer Randall from the Attract and Enroll uh, course, or is that what you call it? Is it a course? (laughs) It's my membership. Yeah, membership. there's a lot in there, so yeah. (laughs) Perfect. But I'm really excited to have Jennifer with me today. She's going to be sharing some Facebook marketing strategies with us, which I'm really excited about um, because probably like other dance teachers, I struggle a little bit with Facebook and trying to figure it all out. It's constantly changing and Jennifer's really good at being on top of all of that. So I'm going to turn it over to her and she is going to share her strategies with us today. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. Yeah, this is, um, anytime I get asked to talk about Facebook or Facebook strategies and stuff, I'm like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) I know not everyone's reaction is like that. So yeah, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get through it today. I promise. But um, (laughs) strategies, Facebook strategies. So yeah, things have changed kind of a bit um, as they always do, right? Because Facebook is always kind of changing and updating things and getting rid of things that we loved and bringing things in that we don't necessarily love. But um, in the last year has been probably one of the biggest changes with the iOS update. And I know everyone has kind of heard about it and I, maybe you have felt the, you know, the effects of that. Um, but basically that iOS update said that if you own an Apple device, that if you pull up their app, you can have the option to, you know, choose to no longer track or allow track. And so what happens is we spent probably like the last year and a half, making sure we had pixels and we knew what a pixel was and all of these things um, on our page, right? And now because of the iOS update that kind of really just made it obsolete because if somebody clicked do not allow to track, we can't retarget them with that pixel anymore. And so um, it really kind of changed the way that we have been doing strategies for my members. Um, And so what we do now is we do there's there's when I create campaigns there's three simple campaigns that we create the first one is um, engagement like we build 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 that engagement audience and then the second one is our targeted campaign which would be those register now um, uh, event kind of targeted ads or maybe a promotional ad for you know a shop that you have or something along the lines. And then the last campaign is a retargeting ad. And so I'll break those down for you. But basically the engagement campaign, I call it my feel good, like everywhere kind of like campaign because we set these and we just set them and let them run. We check in on them. Maybe, you know, Obviously, I'm checking in on them every week for my members, but every month or so, we kind of jump in and go, um, how is this doing? Do we need to update it? You know, um, do we need to switch out the photo? Do we need to switch out the copy? Um, Because the whole goal of that campaign is really just to get as many engagements as we possibly can. Likes, comments, shares even even if somebody just hovers over your ad for maybe like one to three seconds, that's Mm -hmm. considered engagement, which is so funny that Facebook (laughs) knows all of that stuff, but they really do. Right. And so that first um, campaign that we run is really all about warming your audience up because I think sometimes we forget that 
getting parents to sign up for a class is um, they really need to know, like, and trust you. Like they need to know who you are. There's really nothing more personal to parents um, than their kids. Maybe their money. Right. (laughs) Sure. But their, their kids are really, it's just, it's a, they're, it's so personal. And so um, we sometimes forget that there's this big jump in marketing that we have to go from parents not knowing who you are to signing up for a class with you. Um, They do research. And so if you can get in front of them, you know, pretty regularly and you're not asking them to do anything, you're just getting the engagement. Um, It builds that engagement audience that we can then use to run a targeted ad. So there's a reason we're doing that, you know, that first campaign, but it really is um, warming up that audience with three really, we put three little ads in this engagement campaign. So if you're setting up this campaign, basically you're going to have three ads that run at maybe a dollar a day. It's really not much. Um, but yeah, it's one of them would be one of the ads would be a culture piece. Like what makes you different? And sometimes this really isn't even dance related. Maybe it's like your teachers are all CPR certified. Like that could be something that sets you apart from somebody else. Right. Right. Um, The second ad that we run for that campaign is a um, confirmation ad. Like we know what we do is really great, but it's always great to have a testimonial ad or maybe you have some press or an article that was written about you. Those make really great um, ads for this campaign. And then the last ad that we run is really just a feel good piece, whether that's um, a, you know, a scholar, you do scholarships, you do a donation, or maybe it's just a photo of you and a, you know, a mom and a daughter or someone in their first class. Something just goes, makes you go, ah, sure. <laughs> right. Like right. we all have those pieces. Right. Um, but those, that is basically the essence of our really a warm up campaign, my, our engagement. So that's the first one that we do. And like I said, it's not expense. It's not expensive at all. And it's really just something you kind of set and check in on maybe, you know, once a month or once every other month and then switch up the photos. Um, so yeah, that's, that is campaign number one. That's strategy number one. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, um, I know, I know where I'm at anyway. <laughs> I mean, our, our little town, it used to be a little town, but now it's just like growing and growing and growing. And there's literally like, I think eight dance studio. It feels like there's a dance studio on every corner. So, you know, it's hard to be that dance studio that stands out because we're all offering the same classes, you know, like we all do ballet and tap and jazz. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to find that, you know, this is what makes us special. Um, yeah. Yeah you know, to really capture people's attention. So I really like um, the idea of sharing, you know, we're all CPR certified or maybe um, like, uh, what is it called? I think it's, is it YPAD? The, you know, dancers and all of that stuff. I think that would be good information for people to know, especially (laughs) nowadays. Um, But yeah, I really like, I like those strategies a lot. so cool. What yeah. is, so yeah. what's strategy number two? I feel like I should be taking notes. I don't have, I feel like I should be writing all <laughs> of this. Go back. <laughs> Just message me anytime and I'll, I'll, I'll send them back to you. But um, yeah, so once we have your audience warmed up, we move into strategy number two. And usually this, this campaign runs anywhere from, I would say like 10 days to like 20 Okay. 25-ish. Um, again, we're in there kind of tweaking it, making sure that it's being optimized and all that stuff. But this campaign really is our register now. Like okay. we've warmed them up, right? And now it's like, we are going to ask them to do something because now they know who we are, right? They, they, they We've broken through that kind of no like and trust factor, factor a tiny bit. Um, And so this one is definitely going to be a register now kind of thing. And we're going to run this 
to our engagement audience. So when you're inside of Facebook, you can set up your audiences so that um, you can have anyone that's engaged with your Facebook page in the last 365 days, anyone that's engaged with your Instagram page in the last 365 days, right? So, um, so that audience, now that we've warmed it up and we've created this much bigger audience, that's the audiences that we choose when we hit these targeted ads um, because you're going to see better conversion rates um, and it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, a lot cheaper because you're not having to really take people from zero to registration. Um, so that's one thing I would say. The other thing is we do, um, if you don't do lookalike audiences, now that you have these warm audiences, right? Anyone who's engaged with your page, really make sure that you create lookalike audiences from those engagement audiences, because those audiences are going to be um, obviously very, very similar to the people who have been engaging with you. And so that's that audience is also the audience that we will send these targeted um, ads to. I very rarely will send a targeted ad to an audience I just thought of on the spot. And I think that sometimes that's where we are setting up ads, we kind of forget like, oh, I just need to put in my studio radius and I want parents of XYZ and I want them to have, uh, you know, uh, parents of kids of this age and blah, blah, blah. Um, that's, that's a very, very cold audience who doesn't know you, right? And so I think people just instinctively, we go, we need to create the, an audience every single time we go to create an ad. But in reality, we really want those targeted ads to go to people who already know us. So, um, so the, that's where our next um, strategy is. Our next strategy is our, those targeted ads. Leave them for 10 to 20-ish days. Uh, maybe longer if they're doing well. Um, but that is that is how we set up strategy number two. So, um, and just a quick tip, like if you have a landing page uh, that you have some place for them, for them to go and register, awesome. If not, make sure it goes to a contact page where they have a form to fill out instead okay. of the homepage. Because we just don't want them to wander. <laughs> sure, yeah. We, yeah, we want them to go directly to, you know, somewhere where they know what the next step is. Um, and if you don't have either of those, use a messenger ad or a lead form ad, because both of those will be really great, quick, easy places for parents to just give you their information and you can re-engage with them very easily. Yeah. Awesome. So let me ask a quick question. Um, so let's say we, we set up the engagement ad and somebody clicks on it. That person's going to be added into the people who just recently engaged with our page. And then we target to those people who have, I guess it's not really a question. I'm just restating what you said, just so yeah. I understand. Okay, cool. Perfect. Um, so that's kind of cool. So yeah. I've been basically doing it. Well, you know me, I've sent you a couple of messages with my Facebook frustration. So apparently I'm just doing it wrong, like all of it, because I'm totally one of those people where I'm like, okay, five miles from my, uh, from my studio and parents of like, that's exactly what I've been doing all of these years. And um, so it's kind of funny. I didn't even think about like, I didn't even know that there was an option that you could find people who've actually liked photos. Now, how do you, so let me ask you this question. How do you filter out? Because if I share a photo of a child and the parent or the family of that child is going to like it and share it and comment, I don't want to waste my advertising dollars on those people. Is there a way to filter that out or is it going to go to them no matter what, even if they're already registered? <laughs> um, it will go to them even okay. if they're already registered. Um, you can at the very bottom, there is an option for you to um, exclude okay. people who follow your page. So you can definitely do that. There is, there is okay. a, um, in the detailed, it, there's an under detailed targeting, there's advanced. Okay. Yeah. Um, advanced options, I think it is. Um, but you can exclude people who already follow your page. So it's definitely a hundred, it is definitely an option. Um, the reason I like those engagement and lookalike audiences mm -hmm. is because they, 
they're constantly updating automatically without us doing anything. So, you know, you can put in, you know, grab data from, you know, 365 days. So today is day one and tomorrow it will be day two and 365 will drop off and 364 will be 365. So there's really nothing we have to do. It's really just kind of one of those great audiences that you can set, forget, and it's continuously warming up your audience. Um, yeah, it's great. But when you get the, ad, the you know, strategy one kind of everywhere ads going, you'll see that after like a month or two, um, you'll see your reach and impressions hit close to like, you know, three, four, sometimes like 7,000 people. Um, and that just means like your ad, those three ads have gotten in front of that many people. Um, and whether they've, you know, stopped or clicked or whatever, even if they've mm -hmm. hovered over it, like, you know, yeah. they're still going to get to see your targeted ads. So it's just this really great warm up kind of audience. And yes, you can definitely exclude people. Okay. Um, but you have to put that in manually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you this too, because one thing that I've noticed with Facebook and maybe it's just because I've never really understood Facebook. <laughs> um, but I feel like sometimes like I'll set an ad and then I'll see people liking the ad. Um, and I'll go because I'm nosy, I'll go check out their profile and like a lot of them seem like, I don't know, like they have just some generic picture of like a flower and maybe they have four friends and their location isn't listed. And to me, I'm almost like, is this even a real profile? Um, and so sometimes I feel a little concerned, like, are my ads actually going to actual people or are they just going to robots? So that's just my personal experience. Maybe that's not the norm. Um, but how do I make sure that you know, the people that are engaging on my posts are actually like real people. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I wish there was an easy answer for that. Sure. <laughs> um, but it really, we don't know. They're always okay. going to be bots um, and they're always going to be kind of those things. Uh, I, uh, I would take a, like a, a look at, does the language in your ad match the language of where you're sending them like okay. does the does the copy in your ad match kind of the copy of your um web page or wherever you're sending them because sometimes when there's a disconnect like that mm -hmm. um the bots will come in um, and facebook does this too like if you didn't know this facebook when you run an ad and mm -hmm. you're sending somebody to a link facebook spots come in and check to make sure that wherever you're sending them is an actual website. And sometimes they don't get it right all the time. But if you have, there's, you know, the language on one doesn't really necessarily match the language on the other, you will get more kind of bots. Um, but again, if you start using that engagement audience and you start having people engage with your page and your ads and your boosted posts and all of that stuff that are your targeted audience, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot less of those bots kind of show okay. up because um, the algorithm isn't going to, I mean, it's not going to show them, but sometimes it just happens. Like some of those bots actually, I mean, can go into Facebook ads library and just search for ads and they just, they hop on wherever they can. <laughs> That's interesting. That's good to know. It's a little frustrating, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> Yeah, love it. Um, okay, we ready for strategy number three? I'm so ready, yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my retargeting um, strategy is number three. So now that we've actually warmed up our audience, we have sent out targeted ads, right? Now we're really kind of gonna go in, um, and this, again, campaign I would run for about 10 to, 20 ish days, depending okay. on how well it's performing. Um, but we run this to two audiences. So okay. one is going to be the um, engagement from our targeted ad. So anyone that's engaged with our targeted ad. And then the other one is going to be um, the email list from your current and previous students. 
Okay. So we already know that they're students. Right. Um, right. And we already knew, know that they, they know, like, and trust us. And so when we use that audience um, for retargeting, we can use language like, hey, we can't wait to see you back again. Um, and it, that also works for the targeted ad because we know that those people clicked on our ad. And so okay. um, this is kind of the, the one way that I'm getting, I get around using the pixel. Okay. Um, because before when we were using the pixel, we could definitely say, hey, thanks for, you know, thanks for landing on our webpage. Was there something we could help you with in our copy? But okay. now we can't tell if they all landed on our webpage or not, but right. we can talk to them like we know them if they come from our email list and if they um, have engaged with that targeted ad. So okay. re-engaging those people is, is so important because sometimes life happens. I mean, they may have been filling out a form and, you know, toddler ran away with something like, you know, you just never right. know <laughs> their dog had to go out or who knows what happened. Right. right? Yeah. But, um, but they, they really may have wanted to fill out that form, but they just got distracted like we all do. Um, and so that is, that's our retargeting ad. And if you don't have a huge list, um, I usually tell people don't stress, just upload what you have and then create a lookalike of okay. that audience. Um, because it's going to be very similar and Facebook takes those email addresses and the only thing you need to upload is an email address, but Facebook takes those email addresses and scans them okay. and says, okay, all of these people have these kind of interests in common. And then, uh, and then, then you say, create a lookalike from this list. So Facebook will say, okay, we are looking for people who have similar interests to the ones that you have uploaded. And so that's how lookalikes kind of happen. Sure. Um, but um, it's very useful. So, um, and it, honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty inexpensive because you, you don't have to put your ad in front of them multiple times for them to take action because they already know, like, and trust you. Sure. Oh. Cool. Yeah. And then I'm assuming in all of these lookalikes, you can target at least a location. So you're not sending your ads to like Texas if you're in Colorado or something. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You definitely, <laughs> want, you definitely want to put your radius in there sure. for, okay. for all of these. Yeah. Okay. And I, I actually will always set it because um, you have an option to set who sees your ad in a radius. Right. I will always, I will always set it at, um, people who live in and visit that radius because sometimes you may not like you may be just outside of the radius but you drive your child into you know that radius sure. to go to whatever or you go to the grocery store or okay. you know you're just right outside um so yeah so don't limit yourself to just people who live in this radius okay but but what will happen is because all of our phones have gps's and everything right and <laughs> if, <theory. laughs> I know, I know, I know. but yeah. what happens is like if you just live like right outside of that radius mm -hmm. and you drive to the grocery store and you're scrolling but you now you're inside of that radius right now the ad is going to pop up right sure. so um yeah yeah I always there's a fine line be between the stuff mm -hmm. that I is it creepy or is it cool? I'm not quite <laughs> <I know>. sure. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and is there like a sweet spot for a radius, like five miles, 10 miles, 20 miles? What, what do you usually set that for? I think it really depends on how rural you are. Okay. So take a look. I always tell members, take a quick look at your, the zip codes okay. of your current students. If you have you know, one zip code that may be outside of this five mile radius, but 30% of your students are coming from that zip code, you sure. may want to make your radius bigger. bigger. Um, or you can just put in certain zip codes. So okay. if you don't want to use radius at all, you can always just put in um, zip codes and use it over and over again. Facebook has a feature that I, it's hard to find. I don't know why they don't make it easier, but if you're in the ad set level, 
Mm-hmm. And you're in that little search box to put in your address of your studio. Mm-hmm. Over on the right-hand side, there's a little button that says browse. Okay. If you click on that browse button, there's a little drop down that comes up. And then there's a little button at the bottom that says saved. Okay. If you click on that, you can save a ton of locations. So you can save your studios radius or studio radius. So you don't okay. have to type it in all the time. You can save um, zip codes all in one, like kind of area. Um, yeah, it's, it is, it's kind of handy. I don't know why they don't make it easier to find, but I mean, what do I know? Yeah, <laughs> no worries. Um, I had a question, of course, that like, flew out of my head. Um, let me see if I can think of it in the next few seconds. But we were, we were talking about location. Oh, rural area zip codes. Yes. What was my question? Oh, I can't think of it. Maybe it'll, it'll come, come back, back in the next you. couple <laughs> minutes. <laughs> it'll come back to you. That's not related to um, to location, though. So how okay. do you how do you tell? How can you tell? Because again, I I sort of have a love hate relationship with Facebook. I like Instagram a lot better. I'm more of an Instagram okay. girl. Um, Facebook it's always changing and it's always confusing to me. Like there's so many different options that can get a little overwhelming. Um, but how can you tell if your ad is performing well? Like, how do you know, like, Oh, this is doing great. Or, Oh my gosh, this ad is really a terrible ad and we should just start over. (laughs) So there's a couple things. First of all, if you're running an ad, we have to give it 72 hours before okay. we start tweaking it. So once you hit publish, I know it's really hard because it's very hard for me too, but just don't look at the stats. Okay. Because they're not going to be any good. It's going to take that long for the algorithm to really figure out who's responding to it and who to keep putting it in front of. Um, once the 72 hours is, are over, I go in and we look at, first thing I'm going to look at are the qual- the rankings. So there's, it, at the ad level, there's quality, conversion, and engagement ranking. Okay. All of those should be average or above average. So quality ranking, I kind of take with, you know, a grain of salt. It's literally just Facebook's bot scanning your ad going, this is a good ad, this is a bad ad. I don't okay. really care about that. I care about engagement and conversion. So engagement ranking um, If that is below average, then your graphic is not hitting home. Like the people are just not responding to your graphic. So it's time to switch up your graphic. If the conversion ranking is below average, it's the copy. Like they're not, it's not getting people to actually take action. So those are the the two things that I'll, I'll, I'll start and look at first and foremost And then after it's been running for a couple more days, I'll go back in and see what's our um, link click through and how much is that costing? This is so subjective in our world. Um, In the e-commerce world, it's like your click through rate has to be X, Y, Z, or has to be good. For us, it's so different. I just want to know how much is that student worth? to mm-hmm. you. Sure. Right. So if you register one student, like I had this conversation with a member last week, if you register one student, what right now, what is that student worth? And she was like, for, for the re- rest of the year, she said, it's 500 bucks. And I said, okay, great. All right. So that's how I determine like, okay, if I'm spending $17 on a lead that registers, Mm-hmm. is that worth it for me? Yeah. It's a hundred percent worth it. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, I would spend $17 all day long, but sometimes people get discouraged if they see a lead come through and it's, it's like, you know, it's not $6 or it's not a dollar or something like that. Mm-hmm. But we okay. really have to decide like, Hey, what is that? What is that student worth? to me, because that's how much I'm kind of willing to spend, to be honest. I mean, ideally, 
um, I was just looking at stats this morning for um, someone and they, we started an everywhere ad and then we went to a targeted ad and we've been running this targeted ad for almost two months, but she's had 127 leads at like $6. So even if she had four Mm -hmm. (laughs) students registered from those 127, um, she didn't, she's had a lot more than that. But the point is really dive into how many people have clicked through Mm -hmm. And then what is the ad spend? If, if those don't match up and you can't track how many people have actually signed up, that's where I go into your account and go like, okay, we need to, we need to really track this. Like I can tell you, you have had 18 people click through how many people have, have signed up for a trial class. And then we go, okay, from the trial classes, how many people have signed up? And then that sign up number is the one that I really go back to. So um, long story short for the F or how does it work? <laughs> but um, I, I like to dive a little deeper than just looking at the stats because the stats in Facebook, there's a ton of them. Um, right. And we don't need all of them really for our purposes. We really just need to know is the amount that I spent on this lead worth sure. worth what I, what I got. So quality rankings, click-throughs, and then the cost per lead is definitely where I'm going to. And then after that, I'm really just kind of looking at frequency. How many times has this ad gotten in front of somebody? Mm -hmm. Because if it's gotten in front of somebody more than four times and they haven't taken any action, then it's just time to scrap it and start the record. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Yeah. I like it. Um, now, do you know, cause I know on Instagram, at least I feel like videos and reels are sort of, that's where Instagram is sort of going. Is there on Facebook, is there a better, like a strategy that works better? Does it, re- is it really just dependent on all of the factors? Well, <laughs> yeah, no, I think on Instagram, if you um, are advertising on Instagram, you definitely want to be setting up specific ads for reels Mm -hmm. um, and stories. Uh, And that language needs to be speaking to the younger moms because that's where they are. Sure. Um, When you're on Facebook, if you just are not quite sure what's going to hit home yet, um, Facebook has come out with dynamic creative. Um, And basically what that is, that allows you to do is there's a little button in the ad set level that if you just toggle it on, when you get to the ad level, it will say drop in, you know, you, I think you can drop in up to 10 photos. I usually do like one to three. Um, And then we put in copy, but then I don't put in a headline. And basically I'm just saying, Hey, Facebook, this is a, not a super warm audience. Um, I'm not sure which of these photos the audience is going to resonate with. And what will happen is Facebook will show the photos in like a random order and start gathering data. And then what they'll do is they will show you which one is the winner. Ah, And so that, you know, I need to run, I'm going to run this, this photo. um, And it will pull uh, a headline from your copy and it may switch up the headline every once in a while um, to get it just right. But if you're really just like, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing, <laughs> just try <laughs> dynamic, try dynamic creative um, because it does take a, quite a bit of the guesswork out of it. Sure. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Awesome. And uh Sorry, I could probably ask you 500 more questions. I won't. <laughs> I always have questions about. Bring it on. <laughs> but, um, and I know this isn't really on topic for today, but speaking of like reels and Instagram, I can't figure out, do I, this is just a me personal question, but maybe somebody else needs help with it too. Uh, I'm really getting into the reels and I'm trying to post a lot more, but I can't figure out how to boost them. Do I do that through Instagram or through Facebook? You have to do it through Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, yeah, as far as I know right now, there's no way to actually boost a 
uh, reel, you have to set it up as an ad. Okay. Gotcha. So I have to go through, like I'm setting up a Facebook ad, which I hate doing. (laughs) Which you hate doing. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe you'll get me past that and I'll start feeling more comfortable (laughs) with (laughs) Facebook ads. Um, Well, cool. So just a couple more questions just about you and your program. So if my listeners uh, wanted to learn more about you, do you have a website that they can go to to learn more or a Facebook page? How can we get in touch with you? Yeah, I have both. So um, my website is thejenniferrandall.com. And then my all my socials are at the Jennifer Randall. So Pretty easy. It's just my name. (laughs) You can find me anywhere. Um, Yeah. And reach out. I really do love like troubleshooting. And like, I know because I used to be there as a studio owner that I would sit down and go down the black hole of trying to learn something uh, and then watching a YouTube video and then trying to do it and then all of this stuff. But if you have a quick question, just message me. I am always available to help. Like just send me a DM, send me a Facebook message. Um, yeah, don't stress. I, we can help, it can be done in probably less than we're, yeah. You guys have, you don't have time to spare. So I know because I've been there. So (laughs) (laughs) reach out anytime. (laughs) Okay, cool. And then, um, I know you have, you always have something going on because a couple months or was it a month ago, you did the, how to set up the, um, Facebook messenger thing on your website and you have something new going on now. Uh, so what do you have going on this month? Yeah. So every month I do a free private training in my DMS and it's super low key. Um, I just drop in um, a video, uh, one for three days on what's new in the world that we kind of need to know about what's kind of cool that we probably didn't know about that you could use for our purposes. Um, And this month we are doing strategies, just like we talked about today, which is actually kind of perfect. Jessica, I sent over three (laughs) things to talk about. And she's like, this one, I'm like, yes. (laughs) It was perfect Um, then, yeah. But yeah, if you want um, in, just uh, find me on Facebook or Instagram and send me your um, Instagram handle, your name. And I will add you guys to the group. It starts next Friday. Okay. Yes. Next Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Cool. Yeah. I'll probably have to join that one because you talked about it today and now I just want to learn more. So I will join it. I love that it's free. So, you know, it's something that we can do to learn more about it. And if I wanted to become a paid member, what options do you have for me at that point? Yeah. So the membership is, I call it, it's an ad agency, but not an ad agency because we don't, we, if you've done an ad agency before, you know, they're super expensive. Um, and we don't, our marketing budgets are not that run that way. So the membership is me taking care of all your ads on a monthly basis, as many as you want. Um, we do social posting for you. So you create the content. We take it all from there and do all that. And then there's bonuses in there. Like every Wednesday I'm live doing a tutorial. There's special guests that you are part of. Um, uh, And there's tons of other things in there, but I would say the most that people get out of it is that anytime you need something, you just have, you send it over. Like it's just sent over. I take care of it and it's done. Um, But yes, from there, there's, you on my website, you can go to the membership page and learn all about that as well. Um, it's really fun. We have a lot of fun in there. It sounds like fun. Yes. And I was a guest in there. That was a couple, couple months ago, but that was fun. Um, I really enjoyed yeah. chatting with you and your guests and I know we've seen each yeah. other a couple of times, so we've done this before. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, and I'll be sure for all my listeners, I will post all of your socials and your website and everything in uh, the podcast description for today. Uh, Before I let you go, is there anything else that you want to add to what we talked about today or any other (laughs) comments you want to make? You know, I think I want to, I always try and leave people with like a breath of fresh air, but like if, if it's something's just not working, Mm -hmm. It's probably Facebook and not you. So just 
go with that and walk sure. away for about five minutes and come back and then message me if it doesn't work, but <laughs> it's probably Facebook. Okay. It's not you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, awesome. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you and I learned a lot. Um, I'll probably go back and listen to this like five times and take all my notes and um, I should tell everybody to take notes as well <laughs> so that they can learn as much as they can. And yeah, I just so appreciated you coming on today. Um, I don't have it. Well, I have a lot more questions, but I know we're running <laughs> So I'll just message you all my questions and uh, okay. join your strategy uh, group that you have coming up. But thank you so much for being a guest and we will chat soon. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> the Dance to Learn podcast airs every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Leave a five-star review of the podcast and your review may be read on air for your chance to receive a $10 Amazon gift card. To be a guest on the podcast or for advertising inquiries, please email info at dancetolearn.co. Happy dancing!